morning, everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm so excited for today. <laughs> Emotes don't like me, so here's a woot. Woots are fine. Emotes are fine. Uh, most uh, family-friendly expletives are fine. Uh, I'm so excited to be here this morning with you folks to do some painting. My name is Voodoo Val, um, and I am going to be your guest and host for the next couple of hours doing some character illustration. It's going to be so awesome. A uh, big shout out to Kathleen Illustrated for that Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge intro. That was a wonderful stream, Kathleen. Thank you so much uh, for broadcasting for us. I see so many familiar faces in the chat. I see Eric and Lindsay and Nadira. Way to cuff. It's good to see you, my friend. Uh, thanks. I'm glad you guys like the background. It's one of my uh, Mandalorian helmets that I had so much fun uh, painting. Tim Mobest, Mobiste, Sam Peterson, Michelle, Robert, Startup Santa or Santa Tana. Thank you so much, you guys, uh, for being here. Um, I am gonna jump into some illustration real quick, uh, but first I do want to go over the schedule. Also, I'm in my my favorite cozy sweater this morning. I thought about putting on like some business uh, clothes, but then I was like, nah, we're all we're all like mostly self quarantined, I think, or we're on like a serious quarantine. We're probably all um, hanging out in comfy clothes. So I'm going to be comfy with you folks this morning. I thought that would be fun. Um, so I'm, I'm cozy, I'm excited, and I'm ready to go. Um, and I'm going to show you folks the schedule for the day. So uh, we had the Be Creative on Mobile stream this morning with Terry White, followed by Kathleen Martin with the Daily Creative Challenge for Photoshop. I'm here with a little bit of character design, and then Julia Masalska will be up after me for some Illustrator a Daily Creative Challenge challenge goodness. Uh, we've got Photoshop compositing with uh, my friend Erin Nace later today, um, who is an amazing designer, so I hope you folks stick around for that. Uh, Jesse Showalter will be doing the XD Daily Creative Challenge, and then Paul Trenny is doing an awesome segment later today um, on how to live stream on uh, how to how to get started doing broadcasts of your own, which is super cool because we all have uh, kind of some extra time. Um, and I'm sure many of you who watch these uh, Adobe live streams regularly have probably wondered a few times um, how you might be able to do it yourself. So Paul is going to dive into how you can get started with that. Um, it's going to be awesome. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to flip over to my illustration. Now I've promised that this is going to be like the cutest thing ever and I'm very excited to show you. Basically what I am doing today is I am drawing classic monsters, like classic horror monsters, as adorable um, cute versions of themselves. And I did a poll on Twitter and I kind of jumped the gun and preemptively sketched what I was going to do. I was sure that Dracula was going to win um, and last moment Cthulhu won, but I did, I, I have a Dracula sketch prepared today. So maybe we'll get into a cute Cthulhu sketch at the end if we finish this Dracula, but I'm so excited to show this to you. Check this out. <sighs> He's like a little bat and he's got a little outfit and he screeches, I am the knight. How cute is this Dracula? I'm so excited about it. I think he's so precious and adorable. Um, and I've just got like a little, a little sketch of him going um, and then we are, we're going to dive into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is you'll notice I do have my lines and everything, um, on the same layer as my white background, so I'm going to show. <laughs> I am the knight. Yes. Um, so I'm going to show. Uh, you'll notice he al he also has pinky out. His pinkies are out. He's whole. He's gripping his cape. You know, he's got his little his little pinkies out. Um, he's small. Yes. Um, isn't he precious? Um, but yeah, so I'm going to show you folks um, how I go about removing my sketch from the background layer because I'm sure many of us have found ourselves in this exact same situation that I'm in. Um, so basically what I do is I go over to channels and if you don't have um, channels uh, showing in your workspace, all you have to do is go up to window um, and then scroll down to channels and go ahead and click it and it will actually open up for you. Um, and I am going to just hold control and right click um, RGB so it selects everything that's on my uh, canvas. And I'm going to right click and say select inverse 
and say control J to duplicate. Um, and then I'm going to make a new layer and I'm gonna fill this in with white. And it, it, it does the job. It, it probably could be a little more accurate, but I think it got basically um, everything that we needed. And that is, that is good with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge these two together. So I have a blank uh, white layer back here. Um, and I am going to start working on my illustration. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually grab some black, I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to select my brush, and I'm gonna do some weird sketchy lines because I need to get in the groove of, of painting because this is my, my first artwork of the day. Um, your Photoshop runs really smooth, high five. Thank you. <laughs> Dracula, fear me. He is the knight, folks. He is the knight. Blend if or select color does work as well. In fact, I've used select color for this before and just selected the black and then it, it does do that. Sometimes it's a little spotty if some of my lines are very thin, but for the most part, it does work pretty well. Um, all right, so I, I've kind of I've kind of sketched out a little bit and I think I think that that's that's pretty good. I'm gonna lower the opacity of my sketch. I'm also going to pull up some reference right quick. Also, if you folks are over on YouTube in the YouTube chat, please head over to behance.net slash live because I'm actually going to be reading the Behance chat. I'm not gonna be reading the YouTube chat. So if you if you guys can come over um, and log in, that would be great because I would love to hear what you folks have to say. Um, let me pull up my reference. I always have reference up whenever I'm working, um, especially for these segments where I'm going to be drawing for a long time, um, because I do like to kind of keep my eye on the ball, um, a, a, as it were, um, and try to uh, keep focused on my uh, my reference for like real life and also my reference for. Um, for like inspiration and things. So I've got some images up in a Pinterest board of like uh, other art that is like adorable and cute that I'm kind of using for inspiration, but then also um, pictures of bats and things that I think are, are pretty good reference for how his ears work and how, um, how he's supposed to be shaped so that I can interpret uh, this character how I want and kind of bend the rules and everything to make the cute character that I want, but also so that I keep it accurate so he's relatable um, and everyone understands what exactly I am illustrating. I'm going to get in here and make a good round eye. And I'm just going to do like a, like a basic uh, sketch to kind of clean this up. And then I am going to um, jump into doing the final line art, and then we'll add some uh, some color and start painting him up. I like that pretty well. I'm gonna kind of do a little cutout in his eye here because I think that is adorable. And then I'm gonna just uh, actually select this and hit Control J to duplicate it. And I'm gonna drag it over here. And I'm gonna erase this little bit right there. So he has, so he has both his eyes, he's so cute. I don't know what to do, guys. I'm gonna dry his little cape in here. Because he's spooky, because he's got his his big boy cape on. Kind of merging my layers down so that I can erase everything that I need to erase. And I'm just kind of cleaning it up, you know? Hi, Dama Chan, it's good to see you. Mesmerizing eyes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Dracula's eyes aren't bad either. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to do that. I couldn't help. You walked face first into that one. Okay.
Do you use the keyboard for your hotkeys or do you sign stuff to the tablet? I always, always use keyboard shortcuts. I never used um, the shortcuts on the keyboard itself. I've n I never really was comfortable doing that. Um, I've n it's never really been part of my workflow. Does anybody else use um, uh, keyboard hotkeys only? Or do any of you use the actual uh, short key, shortcut keys on the tablet that you use? Val, it is too early. <laughs> Chatting with me through YouTube. It's good to see you, Faison. I remember you. Hi, Ashi. It's good to see you. And that feeling when your own drawing makes you ooh woo. <laughs> the next is Bowsette. I've never actually drawn uh, Bowsette or, or Booette. I know that was like a huge big deal for a long time, but I never, I never jumped on the hype train. I never did it. All right, so he's got little ears. I'm trying to make him not look like a pig. I might actually change the shape of his ears. Um, like we might, I might give them, like make them come up like that. Oh, that's good, I think. I think that's good. I'm gonna go with that. Um, also, later today, I am going to be uh, doing portfolio reviews. So if you folks would like to get your portfolio reviewed by yours truly, uh, definitely check out the portfolio review tab above the chat um, and submit your um, your portfolios in the Discord. Uh, the Discord link is this right here, actually. Oops. There we go. Um, Bit.ly slash PS Discord is the the link to get into the Discord, um, and you folks can put your uh, your your portfolio links into there, uh, and I will review two of them um, towards the end of the stream. But the the last thirty minutes of stream is when I will be doing that. Um, also, make sure that they are Behance. Um, portfolios. Oops. Uh, they have to be Behance portfolios. Um, we just want the, the Behance link to your, to your, your Behance profile where we can look at your work. Um, I don't believe that non Behance links will be considered. Uh, so definitely make sure of that. I'm trying to give him like a little bit of texture and definition to his little earsies here. I think he's so cute. I kind of want to make his um, his ears a little pointier. Oh, he's so cute. He's so precious. I just want to give him little pats on his head. He's so cute. I'm, I'm going to um, actually select all of the internal sketching that I did here because I want his ears to be as identical as possible. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to duplicate it and flip it if I can. Did I not? Oh, no, I did. Um, flip horizontal. And then I'm just going to bump that in like so. And I'm going to erase this stuff that overlaps onto his face. Just like that. I'm going to kind of erase around his eyes a little bit. Um, he is looking so cute. I'm so pleased with this. What brush am I using? I'm using kind of like a charcoaly texture brush. I'm not exactly sure where I got this one, but I typically favor um, textured charcoal brushes. They're um, my favorite thing to use. It makes me feel like I have texture um, uh, to my brush, even though I am using the same stylus I always use. It's kind of a weird psychological thing, I think. Um, I love textured charcoal brushes. I typically don't like to use super clean brushes because my sketching style is not actually extra clean. Um, I, I typically have like a lot of texture and a lot of happy mistakes 
and happy accidents in my work, and I find that using an imperfect brush fits my imperfect sketching style very well. Give him little angry brows. He angry. He's small and he mad. There's his little his little angry brows. And then I'm try I'm kind of debating on how I'm going to illustrate his mouth. I, I, I kind of want his mouth like open since he is talking and then I was but I was thinking that I wouldn't um, connect uh, the mouth too much that I would just you know do something like that. So he has like a little bottom mouth and I may or may not add like a little a little droplet of blood. I feel like that would be um, fitting for him, but I'm not sure if I like it because I can't tell if it looks like an actual uh, drop of blood or a mole. I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll see how I feel when the time comes to really render this sweet little man out. Um, let me scroll through my... my reference a little bit okay um i'm gonna give him like a little a little brooch at his neck maybe we can put like a drop of blood on the on the brooch maybe a few drops of blood on the brooch like that um and then i'm gonna give it like some some frill almost like a like it's a ribbon and then we're gonna give it like a little um a little floof boom 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 so he has a little a little Dracula neck thing. <laughs> His ears are the best. I'm so glad you like it. Uh, my canvas size right now is uh, 5,000 by 5,000 pixels at 300 DPI. Um, you can kind of choose whatever you want. I always make my resolution a mi like a minimum of 300 um, because that is the basic setting for print um, if I would like to print this. And a lot of times... <clears throat> A lot of times I do print stuff because I like to do conventions. Um, so you guys can find me in a lot of uh, artist alleys and things in Northern California. And if I eventually decide that I'm going to make like a little postcard out of this or um, a, a acrylic charm or something, um, then I want to make sure that I created it in the first place uh, for, for print. Um, as far as the width and height, you really can decide whatever you feel like. I typically work um, at like 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000 like square pixels, um, depending on what I'm doing, depending on how much detail I want to add. Um, and then my basic poster size that I work at is 11 by 17, because 11 by 17 inches um, is the standard poster size for conventions. Um, that's what everybody makes their posters. So um, that's usually how I work, just in case I decide that I would like to make something a poster later on. So I'm going to give him his little cape, his wee little cape, and his little arms. I'm going to flip my canvas. I've got my um, flip canvas horizontal routed to uh, my own personal hotkey. Um, I've got mine set to uh, control shift A because uh, it's it's very close to control shift S, which is save as, which I know that I will never forget. Um, so that's what I use it for. Um, if you folks would like to create your own hotkey, all you have to do is come up to um, edit and scroll down. In fact, let me let me actually bump myself over. Um, I can't. I'm invisible. Hold on. 
I'm going to just move myself right here for now. Um, if I go up to edit and then come down and kind of click here until I scroll all the way down to the edit menu, I can go into keyboard shortcuts. Um, and keyboard shortcuts allows me to um, come through here and look at all the different uh, things that can have shortcuts in Photoshop. Uh, and I go to image and I scroll down until I find flip horizontal. Um, so there's like canvas settings here and all you have to do is click in that area and then just type in what you want to use um, and it will set it and then you can hit OK and, and exit out. Um, and that is how I did that. I like to flip my canvas because um, it's a really great way just to see my uh, my artwork in a in a new light. It's kind of like being able to instantly um, see your work with fresh eyes uh, because a lot of us, you know, I think when we're illustrating or designing or whatever we're doing, um, it's very easy to get used to looking at your painting um, or illustration or uh, or graphic piece or photo composition a certain way. Um, and when we get very familiar with our work, um, it's also very easy to, I think, ignore or become blinded to uh, some of the things that might be anatomically incorrect or um, uh, inconsistent as far as the composition goes. Um, so when you flip your canvas, you can kind of instantly see those inconsistencies without having to take the time to uh, step away from the computer or ask someone else for feedback because sometimes we don't always have the luxury of doing those things. Sometimes we really just have to finish what we're working on immediately um, and and go on uh, with the with the process. Um, so that's a great way to do that. I'm going to put his like wee little boots in here. I'm going to flip and I am going to put this other leg in and I'm going to draw his other wee little boot. Boom. And then I want to give him little gloves with lace. I want to give him like little little baby gloves because Dracula would definitely have little baby gloves. I'm going to give him his little his little pinky out. And this is like so different from the stuff that I usually paint cuz you guys know I like to keep things like legitimately spooky. Um, I like to do a lot of illustrations that are kind of on the darker side of art. Um, in fact, I can kind of show you guys. I, I actually forgot to go through my portfolio so you folks can see some of the stuff that I do. Um, let me pull this over here. Um, so I like to do a lot of like spooky type paintings. This is the, the Mandalorian um, uh, series that you folks have seen. Uh, so I like to use like a lot of uh, spooky textures um, and things. And let me go in here. I did like a, a project called The Spooks uh, for October where I drew like a bunch of really scary um, kind of uh, terrifying images. And a lot of them are actually animated. So like you can see this girl's eye blinks um, and a lot of these uh, crystals have like little glowing orbs and things inside of them. Um, I did like a, a hear no, see no, speak no evil kind of thing. I did like a, I don't even know what that is, to be perfectly honest. I have no idea what that is. Um, I did like a strange pumpkin with ooze in it, um, and like a glowing pumpkin and kind of like a play on that old like horror, um, a story about the woman with the ribbon around her neck, you know, and animated that. Um, so I like to do like little animations and I like to, to draw like spooktacular, um, spooktacular things, I guess you could, you could say they are. Um, I do a lot of like, uh, semi-realistic, um, illustrations, um, that are pretty fun. Um, and, but most, mostly it's like really creepy, scary things. I don't know if there's any Dishonored fans in the house, but I'm also a fan of video games um, and I love The Outsider from Dishonored. So I did like kind of a, my version of a portrait of him, but I like to do, um, I like to do a lot of like spooky, creepy type stuff. Um, so that's why today I'm, I'm, I guess I'm still on the spooky boat today, but I'm also doing, um, 
like trying to make it adorable for you guys and try to step outside of my comfort zone a little bit too um so that i can i can kind of uh add a new uh round of skills to my uh to my repertoire as well and keep things a little a little more family friendly than normal <sighs> because um not everybody likes uh, super spooky uh, horror type thing. So I was trying to trying to do something for everybody here. So fans of horror and fans of cute uh, can enjoy. I'm really not sure if I like this hand here, but that's okay. Um, I will I will get to it later. I'm gonna kind of go like that, and I'm gonna go like this. And I, ooh, those lines, man. I'm gonna kind of bring that around like that. So I have kind of a basic idea for what he's gonna look like. And I think that one thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of center this in the middle of my canvas a little bit, like like that. Um, and then I think I'm also going to crop a little bit. And I'm, I'm really bad, I, I typically don't crop um, specifically, uh, where I know exactly what the ratio is of my crop. I, I typically just crop, um, to whatever feels right. And then I, I, I have to go back and, and change things later. Um, how long have you been illustrating? If you said already, please excuse me. I missed it. Oh no, that's totally fine. Andre. Um, I have been illustrating. I mean, I've always liked to draw, um, but I would say I've been illustrating seriously, like taking it seriously and trying to um, get better at it um, since I was in high school, since I was like 16. Um, and then I started seriously trying to make it a job about six years ago, around the time um, that I started streaming. Um, I started streaming in 2014. Uh, and I would say like by mid 2013, I was like kind of on it, like trying to get better and trying to um, trying to get to the point where I could search for work. Um, and before that I had been doing like website design and all kinds of things. But as far as illustration goes, that's about the time where I wanted, um, to make it a job. Um, and then I started doing artwork full time around 2015. I am going to select and remove these ears from the previous sketch. He's so cute. He's adorable. And we've we've only we've only been here for 30 minutes. I still have like a good hour or so um, to work on him. So I'm very excited. I think we're making great time and we might even if we have time after this, we may even get into an adorable Cthulhu if you guys are cool with that. Definitely couldn't handle the movie, but the illustration, yes. Well, that's what I was hoping for, Bernadette. I was hoping for uh, uh, people who like cute things and people who enjoy horror to kind of get into today's illustration. I'm gonna add um, some like little, little hair marks, I think, to kind of break the monotony of this circle. like so and I think I'm even going to add like a little a little floof make him look very aerodynamic you know what I mean you know what I mean guys make his little floof very serious this is not a drill folks I repeat this is not a drill Dracula flies and he's very good at it he's super proud all right, so he, I feel like his face is very detailed and adorable, uh, but I feel like his cape uh, and his little, his little cloak that he's wearing, um, I feel like they're not really very interesting. Um, and I think that, you know, it, they should be. So I am going to real quick kind of look through some reference and see if I can't get inspired for how I might um, decorate his cute little outfit here. I'm, I'm kind of, um, torn between, uh, actually like legitimately detailing it with, um, like fabric textures and stuff. 
and making interesting little hatch marks that just give it some extra texture um, and then applying photo textures later, um, which I which I might actually go with because um, even though we are making good time, we are limited on time. So I, I'm kind of wanting to make sure that I'm not biting off more than I can chew here. So let me see. I'm going to go through my Pinterest board. Um, I'm also really inspired by a wonderful artist. In fact, I will link her to you folks. Uh, wonderful artist, very, very kind, um, awesome woman uh, by the name of Trudy Castle. Um, and Trudy actually does work uh, for my favorite video game. Um, one of my favorite video games, Darkest Dungeon. Um, this is Trudy Castle's work. I'm going to post the link here um, in uh, in chat. Um, but this is Trudy's um, uh, Twitter. Um, and you can see that she does, she does work for Darkest Dungeon. Uh, and she does um, some pretty awesome like paintings in general, but she has these adorable, cute little characters and she adds in these beautiful, um, simple textures. Uh, and a lot of her shading has like hatch marks and things in it. And I don't even know, it looks like this is a crow and he's fabulous. And he's got all of these weapons just stored under his cloak. And I think he's precious. Um, and so I kind of want to do something like that. Maybe we can find even more. This is a great, this is a, this is a great, what is this like a bread mage? Cookie's bread powers are leveling up. She can make the bread rise so much it floats. Happy Easter. This is adorable. So I just love her. Um, her adorable little characters. I think that they're fabulous. Um, she did like this cute little uh, animal crossing uh, little thing here and she does such a good job. So I'm kind of drawing a lot of inspiration um, from her work uh, today. So I think I might go the route of like kind of incorporating cute textures and things um, and, uh, and hatch marks because I think it, it gets the job done and it makes it textury and cool without over detailing. I think that there's something to be said about over detailing your work. I think a lot of us do it. I do it constantly. Um, and it's kind of like you, you have super high expectations for your work and then you try to incorporate every idea you have for that piece and they don't always work together 100 percent um so i'm trying not to do that today uh let me pull up this last pinterest board over here sorry i'm doing all of this off stream i would show you my pinterest boards um but a lot of my reference boards sometimes have nude reference in them um for the sake of you know, pro getting proper anatomy um, into my work, and I can't show that <laughs> on stream. So, all right, I think I got, I think I got some good, some good ref. So I'm going to attempt to do something here. I'm gonna zoom in. Um, I'm gonna make a new layer, um, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add um, some fun little hatch marks. I don't know if those are too far apart. Let me zoom out and see how I like it. Uh, I might actually make them closer and make my stroke larger. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That actually works pretty well. I like that. And I'm going to do that again over here, just wherever I know that I want like shadow. And I am going to come in later and add some, some serious uh, shadow marks 
but for now I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at the uh, the hatching uh, just to get my point across and I'm kind of um, leaving notes for myself if that makes any sense I like to do this a lot um, whenever I have an idea I like to kind of incorporate a little bit of that idea immediately so that when I am kind of cruising around my piece and figuring out kind of where to go next what else do I do um, I can look at it and say oh yeah you know I added these hatch marks earlier I'm gonna continue on with that and see where that idea goes Happens to me in web design, I get so focused on an idea that I realize it wasn't a proper concept and I should have gone more minimalist. Yeah, I, I do that uh, I do that a lot. Did I talk about rushes? I did a, a, a little bit, um, Daniel, but if you have any questions, feel free. Also, it is totally okay if you folks ask questions that have been asked before. I realize that some people are joining um, late and uh, I want to make sure that I answer as many questions as I can for all of you. Hi, Rachel. It's good to see you. He's pretty darn cute. He is pretty cute. Um, I'm gonna color this little underarm area in here and I'm gonna give him some hatch marks on his little arm. little Kylo Ren sleeve going on here. There we go. Looking pretty cute if I do say so myself. We'll do the same thing to this cute little arm over here. Also, don't forget to check out the portfolio review tab because I am going to be doing portfolio reviews towards the end of the stream today. Uh, so if you would like a chance to get some feedback from me personally on your work, definitely check out that tab and follow the instructions to um, submit your, your portfolio. Uh, we do ask that the portfolios that you submit are relevant to the stream. Um, so I, I'm predominantly an illustrator. So if you have illustrations um, or paintings, or I would say you could even submit kind of whimsical graphic art because I've done graphic design as well. So like kind of whimsical illustrative type um, graphic design would be um, welcome as well. Um, the reason why it's restricted to those things is because that's what I do. Um, and I want to make sure that I kind of know what I'm talking about when I, when I give you a review. Um, you know, but there will be other um, segments today for graphic design and for um, uh, Adobe XD. So if you were predominantly like a, a, you know, a very technical kind of graphic artist or you are uh, specializing in UI UX design, um, there will be other segments for you to submit your work. All right, he's starting to look pretty darn cute. Pretty darn cute. I'm gonna do some more hatching here. I'm gonna color this in and color this in. And then I'm going to even add some more hatch marks like so. That's pretty cool. It's looking pretty adorable. Have you named him yet? It's Dracula. This is Dracula and he is the knight. I don't know if... I don't know if my friend Rise Against the, uh, the Darkness, Rise Above the Darkness is... Uh, in the chat today, but if he is, he's probably cackling at me 
because I, it's so weird. I, I hate writing, like showing off my, my handwriting on stream. And yet it's something that I do all the time whenever I'm drawing, mostly because like I make a letter that I can't stand and then I have to redo it like I'm doing right now because I can't, I can't stand for one of my letters to be like out of place or not, uh, not perfect. And then I am stuck like rewriting things or I misspell things all the time. But he's probably, he's probably laughing at me right now if he's here. I'm gonna tip that like so. And I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna bump it over like that. Boom. And our little Dracula. Um, and he screams that he is the knight. All right, um, so now I have um, some cute little hatch marks there. I'm also going to kind of hatch mark in his ears, but not too much because I'm gonna do a lot of shading in his ears and I want those to be prominent. I don't wanna do too much. There we go. So he's got his little earsies. Um, and then now I'm going to look up some reference for how I might execute the fabric. I suppose it's not too worrisome when I'm doing an illustration like this uh, because it's, it's hyper stylized. But I think that whenever we're illustrating, one should always kind of take into account um, that there are different materials in, uh, in each illustration um, and try our best to illustrate things in a manner that kind of suggests that. Um, and maybe it's not, maybe it's not 100% um, uh, worth it for your particular style. Um, if that's not something that you that you do in your work, then that's fine. Um, but for me, I think that I do want to make sure I have uh, some uh, illustrative lines um, kind of showing that it is fabric and not like everything else because his cape is going to be a little bit different than everything else in the image. Um, but I'm, I think I'm going to imply a lot of that with uh, with color and shading. All right, so I've got, I feel like I have him drawn out pretty well. Um, and now this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a new layer. I am going to select a gray color and I'm gonna come underneath here um, and I'm going to color in kind of a huge area that makes a shape around him. And my reason for doing this is I kind of need like a base color underneath because I'm gonna start detailing him, but I also, you guys know I love using clipping masks, when, especially when I'm illustrating. Um, and so this will give me kind of a base um, so that when I apply other colors and things, I can put it as a clipping mask to this, um, this uh, shape of him. And then no matter how I color him in, um, none of that color will ever go out of the lines. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. I'm just doing it the way that I'm most comfortable. Um, however, if I was doing a simpler shape, you know, if I had if I had a much simpler shape to work with, I probably would use the pen tool for this and create a shape around him with my pen tool. Um, but he is uh, quite the intricate shape, so I am not going to use that tool today for this particular task. Uh, in one of your streams, uh, Pixel Art, you mentioned the name of the artist who inspired you to make the effect uh, in the water. Can you please write her name? I could not find it. Um, his name is Magdiel Lopez. I, I believe you're talking about the pixel sorting uh, effect that I did. 
uh, for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge where we made kind of a pixel sorting effect to simulate pouring water or pouring pouring pixels. Um, but Mac D. L. Lopez um, is a longtime favorite artist of mine uh, and I love the pixel sorting effect that he has in a lot of his work. So I kind of set out to find a, a quick and easy way to kind of mimic that pixel pouring, pixel sorting look that he gets in a lot of his pieces so that I could share it with you. I know that it's kind of a, a an effect that a lot of people like to use. It's kind of a trendy thing these days. Um, and so I was, I'm, I'm, I was glad that I could do uh, that challenge for you. I'm glad that you enjoyed it because his work is amazing. He's actually been a guest here on Adobe Live uh, before and it was a fabulous few days that he streamed with us. Um, I was so happy to, to find out that he was going to be on Adobe Live and I learned so much from him. I'm sure anyone who caught the stream did as well because it was such a great cast. I can never decide between Clipping masks or separate layers for each color? Well, I do both, actually. I do both. I do um, clipping masks uh, because you can actually use more than one clipping mask uh, f to clip to a single layer, uh, which is great. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second if you have not done that before. Because I like to keep all the different layers of detail uh, together in a group but separate from each other so that if I, I decide, you know, I really don't like this added color that I put onto this illustration, I'm not, I'm not feeling it anymore, then I don't have to kind of redo a bunch of things in order to clean up after I remove things from my illustration. All right, so I've almost got him filled in here. Sorry for taking a long time on that, but I did want to make sure it was clean around the edges. All right. So I've got him filled in here. We've got about 45 minutes until we do portfolio reviews. So get those portfolios in folks. I can't wait to see your work and what you guys work on. Cody Bear is here. It's good to see you, Cody. Also, hello, Esoft. It's good to see you. Waiting for a mock-up stream. Um, well, you know, uh, I can't say if there are going to be any specific mock-up streams here, uh, but I do know um, that people like Julia Masalska and Paul Tranny um, uh, and Andrew Hawkrattle uh, and a lot of the other designers on Adobe Live have done uh, mock-up streams uh, on Adobe Live before. So you might just, if you scroll down below the video player, I'm gonna actually show this off because I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, um, but when you go to uh, Behance Live and you select the stream here, I'm gonna mer uh, mute this. Um, if you scroll down below the video player, there's actually, first of all, the Adobe Live schedule. So you can flip through and see what's coming up next, which is awesome. Um, but you can also scroll through here and you can see there's things that are categorized by, uh, by, by theme, by um, subject matter. So there's illustration, there's graphic design, there's Photoshop, fresco, photography, UI, UX, motion. Um, and you could probably come in here to like the graphic design uh, and look through and see all of our past graphic design streams. And I bet you, you could find one in here that uh, has a subject around making mockups. In fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think that Julia Masalska did some mock-ups on stream recently. Am I am I right about that? I think Julia's here. Um, but if you're if you're still in chat, Julia, maybe you can tell us because I could have sworn you made some really great mock-ups in Illustrator for this past um, stream uh, that you did. So I would say go. Um, please share the link. If you're on this page chatting, you're on the link right now. All you have to do is scroll below the stream and it's right there. You are fast and harsh on the keyboard. I know I have a, I have a gaming keyboard, so I typically am like clacking my, my keys. Um, so I apologize if that's upsetting to anyone, but it's not really something I can change, unfortunately. Um, 
All right, so I've got my little Dracula colored in here, um, and now I'm going to make a clipping mask. So I'm gonna Control Shift N to make a new layer. I'm gonna right click this layer, and I'm gonna say Create Clipping Mask. Um, and then I'm going to decide how I'm going to color him. I kind of think that I wanna make him like a dusty lavender color, like a dusty purple, I think would be good. I think that's a good color for him. And as you can see, I can come in here and I can scribble all over the place um, and it does not ruin uh, my illustration, does not go out of the lines because I have this wonderful clipping mask set to my, to my layer, which is just awesome. I'm gonna color in his legs, but not his arms, because I think his arms are, I think, I think I'm think i giving him sleeves, but I think I'm gonna leave his arms bare, or his legs bare. So he's got his little head and his little legs, um, and then I am going to make a new layer, and this is what I was speaking on before. If I right click and make this a clipping mask as well, you can see it doesn't make a clipping mask of what's beneath it. It still is clipping to uh, that initial shape because as you can see over here on my layers, all of these arrows um, for the clipping masks are actually pointing directly down to this layer. So they are still clipping to that, which is great. Um, I am going to take like a dark, a darker purple to his cape. And I am also going to um, also put like a dusky red on the, the inside of the cape because wouldn't that be swell? Um, I feel like any Dracula has got to have at least one cape where the inside of the cape is lined in red. Don't you think? I feel like that's a must. I feel like that's a, a like it has to happen. So I've got that colored in. Boom, just putting like some little base colors in here. Um, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna scroll down here to red. I'm gonna grab this red color. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe even a little bit darker. Uh, maybe brighter and more saturated. There, I'll use that. That's That looks good to me. So I'm gonna come in and I am gonna use some highlight colors so not everything is going to stay this dark and drab. Um, but I'm gonna block in my colors and then I'm going to go into actually painting because thus far I've kind of just been illustrating things um, and dropping in some base color. But this is typically what I do whenever I'm painting something. Um, in fact, actually one step that I did not take uh, for this that I usually take for some of my more finished paintings um, is I actually did not start in grayscale really usually I'm putting in my values and everything in grayscale and dropping in color later but this is a pretty simple illustration it's pretty simple um, so I I kind of skipped that that method but all of my paintings um, and I can pull uh, some up um, and show you specific ones um, all of my paintings actually start out in black and white uh, I never start in color I always paint it in black and white and then go into adding color later. Uh, so like this uh, illustration of an original character of mine named Salandra, um, I did this entire thing in black and white. It's totally grayscale, just black, white, and then values of gray. Uh, and then I went over the top of it with blending modes and applied color. And then once I had base color in there, I made a new layer above everything um, and started painting in color over the top. And that's typically how I um, get comfortable with colors. I experiment with colors because I never really plan 100% which colors I'm going to use. I have a basic idea uh, when I'm going into a painting usually of what colors I want to use, but I don't like to focus on that when I first begin. I really like to just focus on the values and the form um, of, my, of my painting or my illustration before I get into all of those details. Uh, some people can't do that. Some people need to just know exactly um, what they're going to do uh, right off the bat, which is fine. Um, totally, totally fine. Uh, but for me, I, I like to give it a little bit of time before I make those decisions. Kind of let the, the, the painting evolve uh, because I, I typically, even when I know exactly what I'm going to be painting, um, I, I typically don't really have 
a perfect idea of how my my piece is going to turn out before I finish it. It, it kind of tells me what it wants to be um, and then develops into that uh, over time. Okay, so I've got his little jacket. I've got his little cloak. He's got his, he's holding his little things with his little pinkies out. Um, he's in this excellent uh, pose, uh, very striking, adorable little little bat pose, little Dracula lunge he's got going on here, um, and I adore it. Uh, and now I'm going to make another layer and another clipping mask. Let's see, convert to clipping, we'll create clipping mask. Um, and I'm gonna come in here with like kind of a gray color, and I'm gonna go around these eyes. And I'm gonna try and kind of speed it up here because I do have about 30 minutes before I'm going to jump into portfolio reviews. So again, get those entries in soon, folks, because I want to see your work. Um, and I am going to uh, start finishing up all of the colors that I'm wanting to do here. I'm going to grab kind of a dark purple and I'm going to color these eyes in even more. And then we're going to get into painting on top. Boom. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to color in the mouth. So he's like, yes! <laughs> Fear me, I am the knight. <laughs> His little teethers are so cute. And I'm going to give him kind of a little red tongue here. There we go. He's so adorable. I'm going to come up to like a brighter red here, kind of a soft tomato, and give him a little nose. Uh, and then I also think I'm going to paint a little bit into his ear here. Give him kind of that that vibe going. I think that is adorable. So cute. Look how cute he is. I'm gonna make this his arms like a dark purple. Boom. And then I'm gonna give him little white gloves. Um, oops. Did not mean to do that. Let me escape and delete that. I hit my T on the keyboard instead of my R to rotate. Uh, and I'm also going to color in his little his little neck floof because he needs that little neck floof colored in. Uh, so let me grab. I'm kind of using this gray color, this grayish lavender color. Um, for white because I know that I am going to want to use some actual white um, in this and if I use true white to color the brighter areas in then when I go to highlight with true white uh, it won't show up so I'm trying to use a color that is not as white as everything. <laughs> He's so cute I'm so glad you like him I want to squeeze him he wants to squeeze you too. He wants to suck your blood. <laughs> He's so adorable. I'm gonna give him his little his little neck floof and his little brooch colored in here. Uh, I'm gonna color in. Actually, I'm gonna make this kind of a goldish color, I think. Like that, and then I'm gonna color it in with some reds. Boom! So now we have the base colors in, and I think he looks adorable. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brief break. I'm gonna kind of merge these things into a group. I'm gonna call this um, Dracula, uh, and I'm going to make a quick background uh, for us here. So I am just going to grab, I love getting textures from True Grit Texture Co. or Adobe Stock. Um, today I'm gonna use my favorite True Grit Texture Co. Uh, noise textures, which you folks have seen so many times. I've literally kind of like, if it was, if these textures were a song, they'd be outplayed, overplayed, um, because I use them in like all of my work. Um, but I love it so much. 
I'm just going to add that um, and I am going to grab kind of a kind of a color. I'm, I'm thinking uh, maybe uh, let's do like a like a well, maybe not a purple. Maybe like a gold. Maybe like a gold back here would be would be good. And I'm gonna paint bucket that in, and I'm gonna find a blending mode that I that I like for this. That darker color might not be so bad. Um, screen also isn't so bad. I might actually do screen. Um, I can flip through and find something I might like. Ah! Let's do let's do linear dodge. Let's do linear dodge. Um, and then I'm also going to grab another one of these, and I'm gonna throw this on here too just to give it, you know, kind of break the monotony of the same old, same old texture that I use. And I'm just adding some texture in the back. I'm not doing anything like specific. I'm not really putting him in a scene per se. I'm just kind of adding something behind him. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a little, um, a little land mass underneath his feet. Let me find a good bonding mode for this one. Um, uh, maybe I actually don't have one that I prefer for this. Let's see. Actually, let's see. That makes it brighter. I might actually not use this one. I'm going to find a darker texture that I prefer. Let's see. It's kind of a nice vignette. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I've got an interesting marble texture, like a halftone marble. Um, that's really fun and it's kind of spooky. So this one could be good. Let's see. I'll let my Photoshop think a little bit. Ooh, that's that's super cool. It's a little harsh, but let's see. I like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that and I'm gonna tone it I'm gonna tone it down. Um, so I'm gonna add like kind of a reddish color to the back here uh, and I'm gonna find a color or a blending mode that I like for that. I go to hard light and I'm gonna turn the opacity down just a little bit and that kind of tones it down. And I like that. It's just, you know, just something um, to fill the space. I suppose I'm gonna group all that together and I'm gonna name that BG for a background. Um, and now I might, you know, I might even overlay a uh, kind of a desaturated color on it cause it's a little bright. I want our character to be the most saturated thing. Um, that's actually cool. That's actually cool. This might be it. It's, it's weird. Um, and I probably will come back to it, but it's very subtle and, and pretty cool. Um, uh, let me find our sketch layer. I've got, look at it. It's terrifying. Um, I realized that I merged our sketch layer with our um, our main sketch layer. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to um, select my sketch layer because you can see some of these sketch lines are lighter than the others, which I don't. Well, you know what? It kind of adds an interesting bit of texture to it. And maybe instead of I was going to change them all to black. Because um, what you could do is you could say control U, open your hue and saturation, and then make all of these black and it would kind of bring them to black. Um, it might actually be interesting to put this on a blending mode as well. Let's see if we can find a blending mode that works. Ooh, well, there we go. If I put it on a darker color, then it only shows my dark lines and my... Uh, my light lines become invisible. That's perfect for me. I like. Um, now I'm going to make a new layer above everything um, and I'm going to come in. Maybe I'll make this a clipping mode, a clipping mask actually. Uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. <laughs> Everyone's been telling me lately that I draw really fast and I always feel like I don't draw fast enough. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. Let's 
start adding this to him. And, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to find a blending mode for this as well. I'm kind of just um, throwing it in here. Um, I'm trying not to be too precious with it because sometimes I get a little lost in the finer details. And this is not gonna be like the last detail layer I do. So um, try not to become too attached to it. But I'm gonna find, that actually looks pretty good, um, that overlay. Actually, I'm gonna leave it on soft light because it just adds a little bit and it kind of changes, it interacts with other colors behind it in a way that I like. So it makes that kind of a darker um, pink color and makes this like a darker purple and that works. Um, so I'm gonna actually come in here too and I'm gonna add uh, some little shadow marks uh, in my cape here. like so. I like that pretty well. He's starting to look pretty adorable. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit here as well. And then we're gonna add some highlights because we desperately need highlights. So I'm gonna give him a little shadow on his leg. Shadow on his wee little boots. He is so cute. He is so precious. And I think he's starting to look, he's starting to shape up big time here. Definitely starting to shape up. All right, um, now it's time for a color layer. Uh, so I'm going to make a layer above everything and now I'm going to start doing stuff like this. So you notice that I don't really remove my my lines um, and that is because I like to keep them. I kind of like the texture it adds. So I'm literally, now I'm sampling color, I'm painting full on in color with no, with no blending modes. Um, and I am cleaning everything up. I literally just paint right over the top of all of my sketchy lines. I like to leave that texture in there. I think it feels, makes things feel like warm and fuzzy. And after I clean it up, we will add um, some lighter colors to a lot of this to um, add more texture uh, and also add um, a little more depth to him even though he's kind of a, a pretty simple character. All right, so I'm going to grab, let me grab this color. I'm gonna make a little bit brighter and I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start throwing paint around. Let's see, I could kinda, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna kinda add like a line here. I'm gonna add that. I come around here, really differentiate this from the back of the ear there. I'm even gonna come in here and start coloring him up. He's so cute. Adorable. I'm even going to grab some of this bright pink and put a little dab onto his tooth there. I'm going to grab some true white now and I'm going to put some on his teeth because I think that that is adorable. I'm going to grab this red and I'm going to drop that into this little blood drop here and then I'm going to give it a little bit of light red and then I'm going to grab some true white and I'm going to put a little a little shine on it. I'm going to put a little shine uh, in this pocket in his eye too and I might even put a little shine like this. 
I think that is adorable. Oh no. What am I going to do, guys? <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> He's so cute. He is the knight. I'm going to put a little bit of lighter color here on his sweet little nose. And I'm going to color in this dark space like that. So he's got his little his little vampire nose going. Um, I'm going to grab a lighter color and I'm going to add some detail to his ear. This is going to be fun. So I'm going to add like these little lines and ridges in here to his earsy. That's how you know, that's how you know, like, a character is cute, because he doesn't even have ears. He has earsies, folks. Little earsies. Bacula. <laughs> He's pretty adorbs. Um, and then I'm going to grab this dark color here and I'm going to really color this part in like so, like really kind of add that and some of that. Um, and then I'm going to grab an even darker color and I'm going to turn my canvas and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some hatches. Boom, boom, boom. Just to kind of give it even more texture because I think that looks pretty nifty. I think it kind of opens his ear up a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. That looks cool. some detail to his little ear. He's starting to look pretty sweet. Um, I'm even going to grab kind of a lighter color for this purple cape and I'm going to give him like a, you know, like maybe purple trim here. My nose is so itchy. Sorry guys. I'm just going to add some little hatch marks just to just to kind of bring out the fabric of his extra awesome back cloak here. There we go. I'm also going to make my brush larger and I'm going to pull that down like that. Give him like a little little purple trim. Please author kindly share your texture, please. I am using textures from True Grit Texture Co. And I cannot really uh, give them out because I did purchase these um, and that would be kind of a disservice to the original creators. But if you look up True Grit Texture Co, you can actually get them for yourself. Um, and True Grit Texture Co is actually um, an awesome uh, kind of collection of uh, great textures that I, I discovered because an artist was using them uh, here on Adobe Live uh, for a segment and I just thought, wow, those are really, really cool and super useful um, and then I, I started using them. There we go. 
Uh, we have about 15 minutes before I'm going to jump into portfolio reviews. Uh, so get those entries in. Also, if you are watching over on YouTube, please come over to behance.net slash live um, because that is where I am reading the chat um, and also where you can get more information on how to submit your portfolio for review. So I like these little hatch marks. I don't think I'm going to put tons of hatch marks on other places like that in, in the... Uh, the piece because I do want um, the cloak to kind of be unique in this way so that it's obvious like okay this is different you know oh also I'm gonna save save to my computer um, definitely save folks if you haven't saved already you need to do that <laughs> All right, there's his little cape. Uh, and I think I'm gonna put some hatching on his sleeve as well, just to bring out these great uh, little hatching marks on his sleeve because they are so cute. There we go. Do it over here as well. Boom. So now he's got his little coat and it is so cute. How is the canvas rotated? If you hit R on your keyboard, um, it will bring up the rotation tool and you can rotate it around. You can also hold shift and it will snap. So that's how I get it perfectly right side up again afterwards. And that, I don't know why my view is, let me see if I can, there we go. My view was showing um, kind of a weird, uh, a weird um, cutout of my piece up there. Um, but yeah, you can hit that rotating tool and you can tell where right side up is supposed to be because the red arrow points up towards the proper, uh, the proper orientation of your piece. All right. Um, I might also take this purple and uh, give his, uh, no, maybe I won't give it a trim. I thought maybe I would, but I think that this is pretty all right. Um, and he looks super cute. Let me grab like some dark purple and kind of come around the side of his head over here and over here just to really push him from the, from the ears. I think he's looking pretty adorable. Kind of paint out some of this sketchy texture like that. Let me grab a slightly darker color and I'm gonna come in here and really detail it. I'm also gonna turn my music back on because my music just stopped abruptly. <laughs> Um, I don't have these brushes for you because I cannot remember where I got them. However, um, if you would, if you are looking for interesting um, Photoshop brushes to use, I highly recommend re recommend going to um, digitalbrushes.tumblr.com um, because what they have over there, I can actually take you there right now. Digitalbrushes.tumblr.com has a um, collection of really spectacular artists and painters um, who illustrate um, awesome work uh, and then post the brush pack that they used to illustrate um, those paintings with. So you can kind of look and see like how those brushes work and if you if you want to use them or not. Um, so let me grab this and I will show you. Um, uh, 
Uh, so you can see the URL there, digitalbrushes.tumblr.com, and you can see all of these wonderful paintings. This is where I get a lot of my brushes because I come here and I see like how these brushes work, how people have used the brush packs, um, and then I uh, I just click on them and um, and test them out. Um, and it's pretty fun. You can find like there's more detailed paintings um, here, but there's also um, some really cute. Uh, like adorable type paintings and, and artists that do like more uh, kind of cute style stuff. So it really doesn't matter. I don't think if the artist that you're looking at um, has the same style as you, like this is a pretty great um, kind of more simple style. Um, you can just kind of appreciate the texture that they use sometimes and then, and then try them for yourself. Like here's um, uh, some like a pretty cool like kind of textury line um, artist that that does some pretty great stuff with brushes So a lot of these brushes people can use for for different types of work You know, you don't have to be using brushes from only the artists that look like they post work you like um, Just get in there and experiment and uh, and test some out for yourself, you know um, All right, so we've got our little guy in here and he's looking super adorable. Um, I think the last thing that I would really love to do um, is group all of this together. And I'm gonna see, I wonder if I can make a, can I make this a clipping mask of this whole group? Yes, I can. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some, I like to come through with blending modes and like overlay some great colors over the whole of the piece. Um, and then I also want to put like a little ground mass, like a little, like a little uh, sliver of land underneath his feet. Um, and then, we, oh, then we have to put the I am the night uh, thing as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here to open my brush panel. Um, and I am going to uh, use the soft round brush. Um, and I'm going to grab actually some red. Uh, and we're going to see how this goes. I'm going to just kind of softly dab this like so and then I'm going to go through my blending modes and find and I typically have blending modes that I really appreciate actually this lighten doesn't look bad the screen doesn't look bad um, I have blending modes that I really like to use but I like to also just go down the line because sometimes um, it's very easy to discover something new um, with the blending modes uh, rather than only going to the ones that you prefer. Um, and I actually really like this, however, um, I don't like how much is on there. So I'm gonna come in with an eraser tool, a soft eraser tool, and I'm going to very lightly erase around the places that I don't want this to be. And I'm even going to turn the opacity down on my eraser, actually, so that I'm not er erasing too harshly. So bad. Might turn it down, turn the fill down just a tad. Um, and then I'm going to come in with some brushes. I'm going to make a new clipping mask. Uh, and I'm going to grab purple. And I'm going to kind of see how this works here for this purple. See if we can't find something we like. Ooh, that's cool. I'm actually going to, on that color dodge layer, um, I'm actually going to uh, change the hue because I like the way it interacts. That's cool. All right, so I'm gonna change this to a normal for now so I can select this color that I changed it to and then I'm gonna put it back on color dodge. Yes, I like. 
Um, and I'm gonna grab a textury brush. Also, we got about five minutes before I'm going to look at portfolios. I'm gonna grab kind of a textury brush and I'm gonna start brushing this in like so, because I just really like that. I think that looks so cool. Um, and you can see how um, this is what I meant by, I really don't know exactly how the colors are going to turn out and I like to add colors um, after the fact. This is my method for adding colors um, when I, um, when I when I do work in grayscale, if you can if you can imagine, um, instead of having had this in color already, um, if all of this was grayscale, I would still be adding um, color pretty pretty easily, um, and that's how I that's how I do that. I'm gonna erase from here because I want to actually keep that pretty black right there, pretty dark. Um, and then I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm gonna just do the edge of it like that. Booyah, neon that. <laughs> He's very classy. He's not messing around. Um, I kind of like that I was gonna make his feet bare, but I, I like, or it was gonna make his legs bare, excuse me. I kind of like that it looks like he has little tights on though If when I put that color on there, so I'm gonna leave that. Um, and I think I'm even going to brush a little bit uh, onto his little ribbon here. He is so precious. Um, I'm gonna erase around the edge of this. I might even turn the opacity way down and kind of brush. Uh, maybe that color doesn't work well enough with this. Um, let me grab, I'm gonna make a new layer. Then I'm gonna grab this purple and I'm gonna brush some of that in there and I'm gonna turn that on a color dodge. Eh, color dodge I don't think is the right color for that. Let's see if we can find one that's warmer. Maybe this overlay, um, but I'm gonna make it slightly less saturated and maybe brighter. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'm actually gonna delete and start over because I want it to be um, in the proper lines. Just a few minutes here before we take a look at portfolios. sure if I like that. I mean, I, I frequently will like try something and then if I find a blending mode that I think interacts fairly well, I will um, actually just go ahead and uh, open the hue and saturation and mess with it there. I actually like that. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to kind of blend this in. With the rest just to give him you know kind of a a little more texture there okay now um we've added a lot here we could probably still go in here with like some red um and add a little bit of light to the inside of his cape in certain places. I think that would probably be a good idea. I'm coming up on the deadline here. I think it's all right if I go just a teeny tiny bit over though. Um, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna put that on a blending mode as well. kind of like this red. I'm going to keep that on color dodge and I'm going to turn the opacity down slightly. And then I'm going to come in with a soft round eraser and I'm going to do like that. Oh yeah. I think he looks absolutely adorable. <laughs> I can't handle how cute he is. Um, the last thing that I want to do um, 
is I'm gonna erase this and I'm gonna write, I'm gonna put Dracula in white and I'm gonna put his, um, his little speech in white. Let me grab, it's a pretty good one, let's grab this. Dracula, and he's gonna say, I am the knight. I am the knight. He's so cute. Um, and there you have it. I, I do want to come back towards the end of stream if we have time and put like a little bit of ground cover underneath him just to give him uh, a little more depth like he's actually standing on something. But that's I think that's pretty good. Dr. Acula. <laughs> oh no, Tim. Um, if I was working in an advertisement department on one of the devices she uses, I'd use clips from her streams as proof of durability. Yeah, because I'm just pounding on the keyboard. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, there is our little our little Dracula guy. Um, I think he is super cute. Um, and I am going to switch over now to portfolio reviews. So let me grab um, the chosen uh, review, uh, the chosen portfolios to go over. Um, and then we will dive into it. So let me pull this up. All right. So our first portfolio is going to be uh, Sergio Faro. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Let me pull both of these up. Okay. Um, here we go. I'm going to pull this over here. Um, so let me actually bump my camera over to this other side here because I don't want to block the about section. I'm going to put myself in the corner over here. Um, and let's look through this. Um, so Sergio, first of all, I love your banner and I love your user icon. I think this is great. I think you have an excellent style just glancing at some of the work that I see here. I think this is really awesome. Um, I see that you are from Madrid, Spain. Very cool. Um, and you have your Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and, uh, LinkedIn linked here. You have information about the tools and stuff that you like to use. Um, I think I would maybe like to see a little bit more about you. Like, you know, it says that you're an illustrator here, um, but maybe a little bit about, um, like, for example, Sergio Ferro is an illustrator specializing in like modular graphic illustration and, you know, so like a little, a little tiny spiel about that. Um, just because it's always good to kind of get to know an artist a little bit when they're, when you're going to their portfolio, but not so much information that you're like giving me an autobiography. Um, uh, cause I don't need that much, but just like a little, a little bit about you. Um, uh, would be cool. Um, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to look at this Taj Mahal because this is just gorgeous. This is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. I'm so impressed. Wow. 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 I love all these different color comps you have. I think you've done this in a very um, great way too, by the way, because I think that, um, and some of you folks who've been here for portfolio reviews before maybe have made uh, have heard me say this before, but I think a common mistake that a lot of people make when they want to showcase a lot of different aspects of their art um, is they put way too many to scroll through. So here, the very first thing I see is what I wanted to see from the thumbnail. The thumbnail shows like a little snippet of it. I'm like, wow, that's pretty. I want to see it. Boom. Right when I get here, there's the image. Uh, then I get to see kind of a grayscale image. I'm like, oh, that's neat. Uh, then I get to see the, the technical um, aspect of how this all came together, which is awesome. And it makes me want to scroll even further. Um, and then I get uh, this kind of cleaned, sharpened up version. I get like one interesting detail shot. Um, another color shot here and I'm loving it. And then instead of just lining these up really large, so I have to like keep scrolling and scrolling, um, he kind of 
merges them into one so I can just get like a nice um, interesting preview of it rather than making me scroll through four more large images um, because the large images that you've posted that's just enough that I'm like interested and I'm looking at them um, but just before I get too bored going through your project uh, it kind of pushes them all together here so I can just take that in um, and not have to kind of navigate and wonder when the project is going to end. So that's great. Um, I would maybe like to see a little more information here as well. I, I see that you have your Instagram, which is fine. And maybe for you and your personal um, presentation style, maybe you don't want to have um, a lot of information kind of cluttering uh, your work. But I think even just one line, like this is an illustration of the Taj Mahal I did because... Um, just right there at the beginning um, would be fine. And then the rest could be uh, textless, um, which is great. So let's take another gander. I'm going to kind of scroll through here and see what this is. I can already tell who these people are, by the way, because you've captured their likeness. I can tell this is Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, I also think that this is done very well. So um, your minimalist kind of information here really isn't a bad thing. Um, I think that you're consistent with it and, and being consistent with it also kind of builds a style and builds a voice. So maybe this is fine. Um, right when I click into this, I get the enlarged, like full version of exactly what I wanted to see when I clicked the thumbnail, you know, cause when you're looking through portfolios, as much as we always say you shouldn't, we really are judging books by their cover here. We're looking at these projects and saying, oh, which one do I want to see? And then you look at the one that you think is the most interesting. And and you've done a great job of giving that content to me right when I arrive. Um, and then also not making me scroll through a bunch of different iterations of things. You just give me like, oh, here's some other you know, interesting details and they're right side by side and I don't feel like I'm lost in your portfolio. Um, so this is, this is really great. I honestly can't say that I would critique anything about your work. Um, I, I don't think I have anything that I would like for you to change. I think that your compositions, um, are excellent. This is just great. I love the texture of these clouds. This is something I think Cody Bear would really dig too. Um, with these great textured trees and whatnot. Um, but I, yeah, I don't think I have anything that I would want to critique as far as your actual work. I think that, um, I guess as I'm scrolling down here, I see, I do see work that I think, I think that your above work here is, is much better than your work down here. Um, and I guess you, you do actually have some, some, some information here in English and in Spanish, I think. Um, uh, I think that these are not as good maybe as some of your more recent work. I think you started adding a lot more detail and really developed a serious voice. Um, and so sometimes we do, I think, need to purge our portfolios a little bit. So I would say maybe um, rid your portfolio of things that don't represent your current style and the current things that you want to get jobs for. Um, if you do want these in your portfolio, because I see these are all for beauty and aesthetic, uh, maybe these are like examples of work you've done in the past. I would say combine all of these into one make a brand new project um, and combine all four of these images into one and do like a nice showcase of this rather than clutter up your uh, your portfolio with a handful of different projects that um, are not as good as your most recent work. Um, that's up to you, but that's my, in my professional opinion. That's what I would do if this were my portfolio. I would like kind of, kind of clean things up. Um, but I think it's very good. Very well done. Excellent work. Um, wonderful style you have here. I love this Hellboy. This is so good. I'm a big Hellboy fan. So this is just amazing. I love you added your sketch. You're still doing a great job of not giving me so much to scroll through that I can't stand it. Um, so I, I love this, um, but well done. I think that's all I have to say for Sergio Ferro. So now we're going to jump over to um, Jordi Beltran is our, our second portfolio we're going to um, look through today. Um, and this says um, Jordi Beltran is an illustrator also from Spain, from Barcelona. Barcelona. 
I guess I'm singing for you today, sorry. Um, but uh, also a link to, it looks like maybe his portfolio site, um, really cute uh, uh, user icon here. Um, does have like a little bit of a, of a spiel about himself. Illustrations, comics, and scribbles. I have illustration studies of a higher degree from the Escola Masana in Barcelona. Uh, I've also attended the Yoso Comic School in Barcelona. My strength is the excessive characters and the environments with high contrast of light. I have been contributing my skills to the field of advertising and video games for several years. Worked as an illustrator and author of comic strips in the local press. Carried out campaigns for municipalities. Uh, and I have developed characters and scenarios in web games and mobile devices, iPhone and Android, in the video game studio Cheesecake Games, of which I am founding member. Um, this is great. This is this is a lot of really excellent uh, work. And I, I love that you also put a translation, which is great because I don't speak um, any other languages very well other than English. Um, and so having it in a language that I can understand as well is really great. Um, so well done. So you have all of your social media kind of linked here, which is good so that we can easily find you on other um, platforms. I have to say and stress folks, it's like kind of a pet peeve of mine. This is personal, personal. Um, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine and it can be really frustrating to me personally sometimes when I go and I look at an artist and I think, oh wow, this person is great. And I look and there's no social media linked um, across their platform. So if I find somebody on Behance and they don't have any of their o other social media listed there, um, sometimes I have to like scour just to double check and see if they have like a Twitter or an Instagram where I can follow them. Um, and sometimes they do. And I'm like, why didn't you put that <laughs> on your portfolio page? Um, link, if you, if you are using, um, certain social media outlets avidly and you're promoting your work, make sure you link them there because some people only have specific social media platforms that they want to use. Um, and they might follow you on Behance, but maybe they're not super active there and they want to, uh, have you added to their Instagram timeline or vice versa. Uh, make sure you're linking all of the social media that you're using for your art on your portfolio site at least, at least on your main portfolio site, have all of the different avenues people can find you on. Um, so this is great that you've got your, your social media um, added here. And now I'm gonna jump into some of these pieces. I'm really loving this um, adorable uh, tortoise here with the stein on his back. Reptilian Brewery, I love this. Ooh, it's like a Quetzal, like a Quetzalcoatl. That is so cool. This is so cool and occult and creepy. Uh, I love how ple like pleasant this little guy looks. This is great. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I like this a lot. Um, I would say maybe give us uh, a little bit of background on why you decided to illustrate for this brand. You know, was this a personal project? Was this something that you were just doing for fun? Um, let us kind of know a little bit about about your your choices here. Um, but this is great illustrations. I love this um, this Quetzal uh, specifically. I love it. Um, I also like that there's hops here in the design little hops, uh, in the, in the, the sculpture here, which is great. Uh, let's see. I'm really loving this custom portraits. I love the texture here. This is great. Mark, Laura, and Anna. Oh, Mario and Maria, Esther and Danny. This is amazing. That, that's awesome. These dogs are just like on this awesome sidecar hot rod combo here. Um, this, these are, these are adorable. These are really great. Um, I will say, I think, first of all, okay, shout out to Dragon Ball, Princess Mononoke, and Akira over here, I believe. This is Akira's cycle, or, um, uh, Kaneda's cycle from Akira. That's great. Um, I love all of these, but I will say, even though I also love this dog illustration, I don't think that it fits with the other illustrations. I think, I think the other illustrations in this particular project are very particular in their style and texture um, and the way that they are done. Um, and this one is good, but it might need its own project because the the vibe doesn't really go with the rest of 
what is here, um, but still good. So if it, if it were me, I would I would make it make this um, its own project to showcase it. Um, let's see what else we got. I'll kind of take a look at one more here because we're coming up on time. Um, I really like uh, this one here, this flying. Um, this is really detailed. This is a lot of work. It looks like you might have used Google Sketch here, maybe. Um, this is great. Uh, I maybe would like to see a little more texture and stuff in the city below, um, because I can I can tell I think that it was made in Google Sketch, um, and so maybe painting some textures in or overlaying some textures would be great here to add a little more depth and detail to it. Um, but I do like it. I I also wish for this one that there was a little more. Um, uh, context for it as well so that I can kind of understand what your thought process was maybe just at least um, when you when you did it or just a line about why you decided to do it that would be great um, but this is a really this is a really solid portfolio I think um, my my uh, advice to to you and also um, to Sergio I think would be um, go through your portfolio and make sure that the work that you have in here represents your best work. Um, and also make sure that uh, when you formulate a project, everything within that project looks like it belongs together, like it's a cohesive little collection of work. Um, and if you find that certain work does not belong in that same project, make its own project and then add more stuff of that style to that project over time. Um, but very well done. Uh, so uh, great job, Jordi and Sergio. Wonderful uh, portfolios. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I am going to close out of here and I'm going to come back to our little Dracula. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do before I take off, because I've got about 10 minutes here before I have to leave, um, is I'm going to add a little, um, a little flooring, a little, uh, shadow or like panel just like a little thing kind of like like that uh, and I'm going to paint bucket that and I'm just going to put that on a blending mode just to kind of add like that I'm gonna lower the opacity I'm even going to go up to filter blur and add a Gaussian blur to it. Maybe not too crazy just to make it a little soft. Maybe crank down the opacity again just slightly just so there's like a little something underneath him you know um, and I think let's see I might actually I might actually color bucket in the background and make it a little bit darker. Either darker or lighter. I wonder what happens if I lighten. Yeah, that might actually do it. Just kind of making him pop a little bit more. I could probably even also add... A... Uh, just to get rid of some of the more detailed texture. Oops. I think you can see in my sketch layer, you can see a lot of those little sketchy lines that got um, kept. So I'm going to come over to my sketch here and I'm going to erase out some of the stuff that got left behind. And I think that that's looking actually pretty darn good. I think that looks pretty great. To be perfectly honest. I'm liking him. I might also, on top of everything, grab a textury brush and maybe add a little more hatching. Just because his head doesn't look like it has as many um, hatch places as the rest.
just to kind of blend and make this a little more cohesive. He's so cute. I'm going to kind of use the hatch marks to bring in, uh, like show that his, maybe the direction of the fur, you know? I think he looks adorable. I love it. I might even grab this color and get something a little darker and I am going to rotate the canvas. Trying to keep track of time here as well. Gotta go. Great illustration. Adios, Anthony. Thank you so much. I'm going to add like a little bit of shadow. Like so. And maybe a little bit of brightness to his eyes. Just like that. He's so cute! I could even, um, last minute here, I could even um, add some teeny tiny hatch marks to the inside of the cloak. Like some directional hatching. What I'm doing too is I'm sampling the darker color below this so that these hatch marks kind of blend in to the area around it. You know, and just give it a little bit of texture. And then maybe I will also do a little bit here like so. Um, but I think that's all the time I have, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to uh, post this, uh, image on my Twitter. Um, if you folks would like to follow me over there, let me save this out real quick. Um, I might actually cut this Dracula out, um, and then just post that his name is Dracula, um, in the post, but I'm going to save this as, and I'm going to save this, um, as a JPEG. Boom, save, I'm gonna say okay. And I'm gonna come over to my Twitter, boom, boom, boom. Um, and I'm gonna say, here is the cute Dracula I painted on Behance today. Um, and then I will give you guys the link to the tweet because then you can kind of blow up the image and look at it closer, get a closer look. So I'm going to say, boom. Um, and then I will give you that tweet. Here we go. Copy link to tweet. Boom. There you are, folks. You guys can, can blow it up and kind of look at it closer than um, whatever screen you may have been looking at this on. I really appreciate you folks um, uh, joining me today. I've just got a couple minutes left here to say goodbye. It was such a blast. Um, please stay tuned, though, because I am not the only uh, designer who is going to be on Adobe Live today. Um, we actually have a pretty jam-packed... Um, uh, schedule. Um, we had Terry White on earlier with Be Creative on Mobile, um, and we had Kathleen Martin doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge just before me. I am finishing up with my character design segment um, right now, but Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge is coming up next with Julia Masalska, who is a wonderful designer. Uh, my friend Erin Nace uh, from Flurn is going to be doing Photoshop compositing after her, followed by Jesse Showalter doing the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge, and then Paul 
Tranny, and it's going to uh, finish off the day with an awesome segment about how to live stream, which is, I think, pretty fantastic. Um, so yes, I can thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining me today. It has been a blast. Um, and I will actually see you later today because I'm going to be um, in the chat doing the whole modding thing. Um, also, yes, I did just do finger guns. I'm pretty sure the cool kids still do that. So um, not only do the cool kids uh, do finger guns, they also say diggity dope. Um, and they also say, uh, there's something else. Sam would know because he's a pretty, he's a pretty cool guy. Something else that I, that I said the other day, um, that I'm kind of embarrassed I said. <laughs> um, but thank you all. Um, and I will see you, uh, later on. Adios everyone and happy designing.